So, um, uh, as Lucia said, I'm Julie Britton. I'm the Deputy Executive Director of INASP. So, what that means is that I'm responsible for the development and implementation of program strategy. Um, I, as Lucy, want to welcome you all today and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it's great to see some familiar faces, but also some new ones. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit um, about uh, INASP. Um, most of you know us as an organization, and you will have heard something about different projects in the past at previous PFDs and through other work uh, through other work that you've done with us, but you might not necessarily understand how, how all the work um, links together and also um, the approaches that we take in our work um, and, uh, and, and the values that drive our work. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about that this morning. So essentially, uh, INASP is what's called in the development sector a capacity development organisation. So we support the development of knowledge, skills, and learning. And um, the intent of that is to uh, lead to changes that contribute eventually to national development. Um, we're very committed to, st to, to working sustainably. And by that, we mean um, working with organizations that are already exist in, in, in local countries, um, organizations that have the remit to do work in the areas that INASP works, so research, information, um, and knowledge. And um, um, we are committed to leaving a sustainable legacy um, at the time that INASP leaves a country. So um, one of the things that I'm going to be talking about this morning is how we, um, how we work in a sustainable way with local partners in country. Um, so at the sectoral level, we work at what, um, what's called the res with research and knowledge systems. So the organizations, institutions, and individuals that contribute to research production, dissemination, and use. But we work actually at, um, in countries at three levels. National level, so we work with government ministries, academies of science, National Science Foundations, University Grant Commission, um, NRENS, which are the, the equivalent here is the JANET, the National um, Research and Education Networks, and Library Consortia. And there are representatives of Library Consortia here today. Uh, we also work at the institutional level, so primarily with universities, research institutes, library schools, civil service colleges, and also with local publishers. So essentially with um, institutions uh, that are related to education. And we also work with individuals. So policymakers, researchers, academic librarians, IT staff and, and journal editors, and many, and many others actually. Um, we do a lot of training. So this year we will train more than 1,500 people possibly 2,000 people, because we've just started to um, experiment with mini MOOCs. So um, Ravi, our uh, online facilitator of research writing courses for AuthorAid, has uh, just piloted our first facilitated online course um, for research writing for, I think, more than uh, 250 researchers, which is great because it means we can reach a lot more people using online training, and we can also reach people in countries that we wouldn't otherwise easily be able to work. So for instance, Afghanistan, Somalia, uh, the Middle East. So for instance, there is uh, somebody from Iran on this most recent course. And actually a lot of Jamaicans for some reason. <laughs> we had a lot of uh, interest from Jamaica this time around. Um, as well as training, um, we are also have a mentoring program in, the, in AuthorAid, which I'm sure many of you have heard about before. And we're looking to um, improve the mentoring program by looking at uh, the experience that mentors and mentees have. And you'll be hearing, I think, from both a mentor and a mentee today. Mentor. Just a mentor, okay. <laughs> um, we're also going to be looking in our evidence-informed policy-making program at, at 
um, mentoring and whether we can set up a mentoring system in Zimbabwe uh, with uh, government ministries. We also have communities of practice. So we've had a very um, popular uh, author aid discussion list that's been going for a number of years now. I think there are more than 1,500 members on that discussion list. And people share, pra share best practice um, and, uh, and ask questions and get responses from a global community of uh, researchers and academics, which is great. And we've, we've started also to look at uh, developing communities of practice in our other areas of work. One of the great strengths of INASP is that we work in many countries. So as well as the 23 countries that we work in, which are our focus countries, um, we also have uh, a global community because of, um, because of AuthorAid. And the communities of practice that we're looking at um, developing in the next year or so are for librarians and library consortia to share best practice and also um, for, for trainers, because we have a lot of local trainers and we want them to, sh to um, share how they, uh, how they prepare and how they train in country in order to look at the uh, quality of training. Um, as well as training and uh, communities of practice, we, we also run facilitated workshops. So Helena, who's here, um, has been facilitated some workshops for us for consortia this past year. And that's slightly different than training because it's about bringing people together towards a common goal and working through what it is that, um, that the organization can do to develop. And, um, and we just bring people together. So we've started um, to do a lot more in terms of advocacy. This past year, for instance, we, um, we've been to at least 10 countries and met a whole range of different individuals. So for instance, I went with John to Nepal um, earlier this year, and we met people from a whole range of uh, different areas that make up the research and knowledge system. And we were able to bring people together that might otherwise not have met each other, um, and to facilitate discussions to unblock some of the um, gaps and issues in the, no in the research and knowledge system. So, we, as, we see our role as also acting as a catalyst for change. So I thought it would be useful to give you a little bit more detail about our current project work. What we're currently funded to do, actually, is um, two programs, Strengthening Research and Knowledge Systems, which many of you will have heard of, um, CIRCUS, which is about increasing sustainable access, production, and communication of research. And we're working in uh, 22 countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And the other program is VACA YICO, um, which is a, a combination of a, a, a Ghanaian and Zimbabwean language, uh, meaning to uh, build capacity. And that's about the, the uh, increasing the sustainable use of research by policymakers. And that's in three countries. Um, Ghana, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. Um, sustainable access to research information is the first big area of work um, that we're focusing on under CIRCUS. And that's led by John, who many of you will have met, and if you haven't already, you'll meet him in the break. Um, and that's the research access and availability team. And there are three things that we do um, under this area of work. The first will be the one you're most familiar with, um, and it's about providing affordable access to e-resources. And what I want to do with each of these areas of work is talk about what we're trying to do to build sustainability in each of these areas. So in terms of affordable access to e-resources and National Library Consortia strengthening, um, not all countries have a consortia. And um, what we're trying to do in, in, in the area of affordable access is build consortia's ability to take on the responsibility um, for library negotiations and library training. This is a, quite a new area of work. Um, and it's a, an area of work that we're um, committed to hand over very gradually. So. Uh, e-resource access can never be sustainable until, unless countries can manage without our help. 
but many of the consortia and national bodies that we're working with are not geared up to do this kind of work. So we've um, developed a new area of work directly with library consortia to help them understand the key capacities they need to develop in order to be able to provide access to e-journals, not just now, but into the future. And this includes looking at these consortia with the help of Helena and Jacinta from Kenya, such as uh, at areas such as financial sustainability, uh, member representation, and other governance and management issues. So in turn, um, Helena and Jacinta have been going around to different African countries, um, working with the consortia um, to look at what are the areas that they need to strengthen um, in order to be able to take on uh, responsibility eventually for negotiations and for library training. But we are expecting this to be a, a long-term um, programme of work. We've also started to introduce, as you may have heard, short introductory negotiation training workshops. And we're going to be doing this with all of the countries that we work with. Um, and there are some people who, who are here that you'll meet um, who've been receiving the first couple of days training on negotiations training this past week. Um, but this is a long-term prog program, so a two-day workshop doesn't make anyone an expert in negotiations. And, um, and it would be unfair to take advantage of them. So we're, we're hoping that you'll bear with these countries as they start to take on these skills and, um, uh, and, and, and stick with the programme in a sense of, of uh, working at the pace of the countries. It is certainly going to take at least two or three more years before consortia are in any kind of a position to take on um, a great deal more responsibility. Um, as well as the consortia work, um, we're also continuing uh, to provide um, digital library management skills. So that's where a lot of the individual training is happening. We have um, agreed three-year plans with 16 library consortia and equivalent national bodies. Um, and they, these plans include support for training courses in key skills areas such as information literacy and marketing of libraries and, and Miro as well, management of um, the monitoring and evaluation of e-resources. We've also done quite a lot of work in this past year on improving the quality of our training. So all of our courses have been revised and updated. Many of them are, um, should be accessible on our website and can be downloaded and used by anybody. Um, we've introduced pre and post assessments for all of our courses as well. So um, before each course and after each course, we test people's knowledge of core concepts. And uh, the idea is that we want to make sure that people are learning um, in each of our courses. And then we're working with the consortia um, within the year after the courses that we've run to, to check that participants in the courses that we run have managed to go on to do something as a result of the courses. Um, so we're very interested in not just whether people have learnt at the time, but that there has been some change in the approach that they're taking back at institutional level as well. Related to training quality, we've also um, recruited recently a training quality coordinator and she's um, uh, been supporting pedagogy courses in country so that we can strengthen the quality of our local trainers. Um, and she's going to be looking at um, setting up a network of trusted trainers, um, starting with two pilot countries. So that, uh, and this is part of the whole sustainability. Eventually, we'll have to stop running uh, library training in countries because we've been doing it for a while. And, um, so we want to leave a cadre of um, library trainers who are able to carry on after we leave. The second big area of work that we uh, do under Circus is uh, research production and communication. And you're going to be hearing later from Julie Walker, who leads on this area of work. Um, you, many of you will have heard of AuthorAid. Basically, it's a research writing um, and communication uh, platform um, with, uh, I've already mentioned, an online discussion list, a mentoring program, and research writing. Uh, we've 
introduced some new online courses last in this past year on academic literacy uh, and also on proposal writing and we're looking to develop more online courses as well. And the other thing that we've started to do in, in order to build sustainability in this area is to, uh, we're going to be working in five countries, we've started with Sri Lanka, Tanzania and Ghana, to embed research writing courses in um, selected universities uh, using the Moodle platform. And uh, the final area under uh, research production and communication is the journals online. So uh, we, are, we have identified in, um, or are identifying national organizations um, in the countries where we, where we run journals online platforms uh, to take on responsibility for um, the journals online platform. So we're working with the Bangladesh Academy of Sciences to take on the management of Bangladesh. We're working with the National Science Foundation in Sri Lanka to take over the um, Sri Lanka JOL. And we're doing uh, similar things for Nepal and for Latin America as well. And to complement that work, we've started to work um, in a lot greater depth on uh, journal quality. So we've been uh, running workshops on how to improve the, the quality of journals, not the content, because we can't do much about that, but the journal quality um, in terms of the processes and best practice in terms of publishing. As, long, as well as all of the, the, uh, the work that I've already talked about, we are running four pilots as part of Circus. So we have a library and information services uh, uh, curricula uh, pilot, which is about working with uh, library schools in six countries, national library schools, to um, try and improve and modernize the curricula in the library schools so that people are graduating, librarians are graduating, equipped to manage digital libraries. And what we're hoping is that if we, if we work um, if we intervene upstream, that there'll be uh, less need for um, building capacity later. The second uh, pilot is uh, IT networks. So we have done work in the past on, um, with universities on bandwidth optimization. This is a slightly different pilot. So this is looking at um, the fact that even when bandwidth has been improved in a university, still the way that the IT network is set up in that university is not always um, set up in the best way to make uh, access to e-resources easy or seamless for researchers. So um, we've been working with Ubuntu Net and with NRENS, the National Research and Education Networks, to um, train the NRENS in order to train campus network engineers in how to um, set up infrastructure in universities so that, uh, e so that there'll be easy access to e-resources and so that they understand the needs of the library um, and academic research availability better than they have done in the past. And the third pilot is academic publishing in Tanzania. So we've been working in partnership with VSO, Voluntary Service Overseas in, in Holland. Um, and uh, uh, also Elsevier have come in on this pilot as well. And where we are um, developing the quality of journals specifically in Tanzania and also helping them set up a academic publishing network. And um, Elsevier has um, kindly offered to provide some uh, trainers um, to help uh, journals to improve their quality on the ground. Uh, and the fourth and final pilot is, um, is, a, is a pilot that we're trying in, out in Sierra Leone. So Sierra Leone is a new country for us. It is not uh, yet a country where we are um, negotiating for access because they're not in a position to purchase e-resources. But they do have a lot of research for life resources. So we are um, working across or are intending to work with Research for Life across all of our areas of work, library training, um, research writing, and uh, journal quality, to see that if you work um, in a much more concerted way for a short period of time, um, can you make um, 
a difference faster and make more impact. And also one of the interesting things about working in Sierra Leone is where we're looking to see what kind of criteria needs to be in place for in us to be able to go into a new country. So that's circus. Uh, Vakayiko is a consortium that we um, started last year. It's, I should have said, by the way, that Circus is funded by DFID and CEDA. Vakayiko is funded by DFID. Um, it's a part of a program of work of six consortia under the BCURE uh, DFID program, which is building capacity for the uptake of research. Use and uptake are slightly different terms, <laughs> but in this case, uh, uptake means, is intended to mean use of research by policymakers in decision making. So the intent of this uh, consortia um, and of the other five consortia under the BQR program is to um, try out different methods of increasing and stimulating the demand for research amongst policymakers. So there are um, five partners in this consortia in three countries. INASP uh, and ODI, the Overseas Development Institute, are the UK partners. Um, GINCS is a Ghanaian NGO um, which uh, is working with the Ghanaian Civil Service College. Um, ZIPNET in Zimbabwe is a Zimbabwe evidence-informed um, policy-making network, and then there's the uh, Human Sciences Research Council in South Africa. And there's three areas of work under the Vakayiko program. Um, in Ghana, we are working with the Ghanaian Civil Service College to introduce and embed curricula on evidence-informed policy-making for new civil servants. Um, and uh, we're also hoping to expand the evidence-informed policy-making courses to Parliament um, and make it part of their continuing professional development later. In uh, Ghana, uh, sorry, in Zimbabwe, we are working with uh, ministries um, and with the public um, to run uh, policy dialogues and knowledge cafes. So policy dialogues is when uh, is a, a convening, a meeting around a specific issue where you bring together policy makers, researchers, um, and the private sector as well to tackle a, a development uh, issue. And we've, we've, uh, Zimbabwe has run their first policy dialogue um, a couple of months ago, and it was very successful, and we are hoping is going to lead to a change of law. And uh, Zimbabwe are also running knowledge cafes. So they haven't run the first one yet. They're intending to in the next couple of months. But basically, this is a similar sort of thing um, where uh, we, they will invite in the public um, to talk about a specific science issue, to try and um, stimulate the public's interest in the use of research in policy making and decision making. In South Africa, um, the Human Sciences Research Council is twinned, um, working with ODI in particular, um, and slightly different um, project. Um, it's looking at uh, developing a tool in particular ministries, um, which will help policymakers decide what research they need to commission um, in order to um, uh, pr in order to fill a gap in the evidence that they need to make decisions. So that's a, a summary of what we do. Underlying everything we do is to work at uh, is a commitment to work at national level where possible and also to improve the quality, sustainability, and impact of everything we do. Thank you.